In the previous video, we have learned how to create a validation set for our brain MRI dataset. In this video, we will use this validation set to see if our CNN model has overfitted the training data by monitoring both the training and validation errors. Let's get started. Hello everyone and welcome to ML Down. So the big question is, are we overfitting? We're gonna be starting a training cycle of our CNN model. We're and gonna actually use this uh, dataset class that we've created. Namely, first foremost, we need to create an object of the class and then we will normalize everything and then we will split the data. Create an object, normalize everything. So when you normalize the entire data is normalized here, and then you would call the train validation split, which will fill up all these four variables that we talked about, which is your training and validation set images and the corresponding labels, right? So let me just run this. Great. Now we're going to actually start the training and validation cycle. Now this is interesting. First things first, we're going to create the necessary data loaders. All right, so it is exactly like what you've seen before. So we are creating the data loader from our M uh, MRI dataset class, or I have to say actually MRI dataset object, uh, batch size 32. For training, we turn on shuffling as we always do. And for validation, which is really similar to inference, we don't really need to do anything. Uh, so we don't need to do any shuffling. So I just leave that as false. So I'm gonna run this, great. Next, we're going to define our device and also we're going to create our model and gonna, we're going to put the model on our GPU. So again, this is exactly what we've done before. So nothing new here. I don't want to waste time explaining these lines. Again, finally, we will define the learning rate and the optimizer. So again, like before, so nothing has changed. Again, we are using Adam as our optimizer. Because we need to keep track of the training process, we have to have a way to determine whether we are overfitting the data or not. In order to do that, we have to keep track of the losses, the training loss and the validation loss, or sometimes people call loss error, same thing. Now, in order to do that, I'm just gonna define two lists that will hold the training loss and validation loss as the epochs will, uh, the number of epochs will grow, right? So I'm just gonna run that. Now is when, where we're gonna actually start our loop and the actual, uh, you know, loop of the epochs and the training will happen. The story is, as the network learns more for more and more number of epochs, at the end of each epoch, you would validate on the entire validation set and you keep track of the losses of the training and validation set. And if there is anywhere, and I mean anywhere, that the training error or the training loss keeps going down, but the validation loss keeps shooting up, that is the point where overfitting has started. That is where the model has started to memorize the training data and that kind of model is absolutely rubbish because it will not be able to, uh, you know, generalize to the unseen data. We don't want that to happen, right? We really don't want to. That's, that would be a big disaster. So let me just get started by defining the for loop for the number of epochs. I've defined training loss, so this will just keep track of uh, the losses for each one of the data samples in the training set, but then you can sort of aggregate all of that. For example, let's say take the average of all of that and that number becomes uh, the average training loss for the, across the entire training data for one epoch, right? So this is just something that you will keep filling up for every uh, training data in your training set. And then you set model to train and this is where the important things happen. Before actually using the train data loader, you have to tell the data loader, okay, look, in my MRI dataset class, if you're gonna retrieve anything from me, if I'm gonna use you to retrieve the data from this, uh, th this dataset object, I want you to know that I'm interested in only X train and Y train, right? Nothing to do with the validation subsets inside this object. In order to do that, uh, if you remember, we created a mode variable inside our dataset class, right? In the previous video, we've done that. Now, all you need to do is to say that, okay, in my MRI, data set, I'm gonna change that that variable called mode, I'm gonna make sure that it is set to train. And then, as always, you can start, you know, going through uh, the train data loader here. At every iteration, 
the train data loader would retrieve a portion of only X train and Y train because its mode has been set to train, okay? So that is the important thing that we discussed previously. Now, everything else here is gonna remain exactly like, like before. So I'm, I don't want to spend time explaining this. You have already seen uh, like what we do in a data loader. So nothing really new here. So again, we set the optimizer zero grad. Um, we get the data from image and label that, that has been retrieved by the train data loader. And we know that they're only related to the training data set inside the object. So X train and Y train. And then you pass the data into your model, compute the loss, um, and then uh, you, know, you do the back propagation and then step your optimizer. And then you grab that loss and you put it into your train losses. So this entire thing keeps happening for every little data point in your training set, okay? And after that is done, it means one epoch has finished. This is where you will aggregate all of those train losses and put them into your epoch train loss, okay? This is again very simple. So that is why I put this outside this loop, right? So when the next loop happens, when the next epoch starts, again, train loss is set, losses is tra set to zero, but epoch train loss will keep growing and growing and growing. Because if you have 600 epochs, you will have 600 values here. Now, this is the important part. How are you gonna validate your model? How are you gonna use the validation set? After one epoch has finished over here, you're gonna say, okay, you have been trained for, with only one, for only one epoch. Now I'm gonna validate you on the entire validation set and see how you're doing, okay? So this is again, very similar to what you saw here, but the exact same things happen, but this time for validation set and for validation losses. So I'm just gonna paste it here without wasting too much time. So again, here we have val losses, again, as empty. You turn the model into eval mode. Now here, you turn the data set mode into val, so that anything that is going to be retrieved from the data set object is gonna be related to do only X val and Y val inside the object, okay? This is a very smart way of actually, you know, um, telling the data loader what to retrieve uh, and also let the object to, to sort of interact with the data loader in a smart way. Um, I personally like it very much. So again, like validation is exactly like inference that you're testing the model. So that is why you, you start torch uh, dot no grad. You don't, you're not interested in computing the gradients and uh, you know, inside your uh, computational graph. Again, the val data loader is gonna be used here. So literally exactly everything that you've seen before, but this time we are filling up val losses and we're averaging them and putting that into epoch val loss. So at the end of this line, for one epoch, you have trained your model and you have validated it on the entire validation set, okay? And what you can do here, you can actually record these validation sets, well, not record, but actually print them, right? Just so you can have an idea as to what's happening behind the scene. Because you don't want to just, you know, stare at a, you know, fixed screen for 600 epochs, right? So you want the, the code to actually print out something. That is why I'm just going to put here a uh, sort of condition. Every time epoch.1 divided by 10, the remainder is equal to zero. I want you to to train, to print out the train epoch and, uh, and also train loss, validation loss, uh, so that I will have an idea as to what's happening behind the scene. And this is just a typical way of you know, printing things. So the mean of train losses and the mean of val losses will be printed out. So this way you will have an idea as to what's happening, right? So let me just uh, run the cell and you need to be patient with me, right? So hopefully we will see something happening, something interesting. Let's see. Okay, we're back. 600 epochs are done. Training loss and validation loss are being printed. All right, so I don't wanna look into all of these numbers. So let's just you know visualize the training loss and validation loss. So again, I have a very simple script here. No need to waste time on it, very, very simple. Literally, uh, you know, plotting all of these, both of these lists. So remember, training loss is gonna be in blue and validation loss is gonna be in red. One, 
two and three. Three. Yes. Okay. Okay. That's exactly what I was hoping for. Okay. So here we are having the number of epochs, right? 600 epochs. And the loss is from zero to whatever number it is. It's just, you know, binary cross entropy. Um, here you can see that the training loss is, you know, keeps going down, keeps going down. And at the end, it just reaches almost zero as the number of epochs are increasing, right? And the validation loss is going down, is going down, but at some point you see what's happening here. It just starts shooting up, going up, going up, going up, and then here it even steeps up even higher. This is exactly where the training has become much better. It's becoming more stable. That is when the memorization of the training data has gotten even worse. So meaning that it's really memorizing the training data really well. That is why the validation loss is terrible now. It's like absolutely shooting up. So this means the model has overfitted after around this point. So what can you do to actually avoid overfitting? You can actually do hyperparameter tuning of your model, meaning that you want to play with the number of layers, with the number of neurons, with the number of filters, because sometimes the model might be simply too complicated and too powerful for the data, for the complexity of the data that you're dealing with. If the model is too strong for the data, what's going to happen is it's just going to easily overfit to the data and memorize everything, right? But anyway, I hope that this has been informative for you, and thanks a lot for watching.